just getting my tools out. Try and get something going here. This kid's too small. He's too young looking. His head's too big, I guess. All right. So now, I'm just going to kind of add some stuff. What's up, guys? Welcome one. Welcome all to the Jerkmonger Show coming at you live from Tampa, Florida at Jerkmonger Studios. I am the your humble host, the Jerkmonger, uh, Elliot Fernandez. And I uh, just want to welcome you guys to another exciting session of development for Comet Boy Otomo. Uh, this is the story that I am working on. This is one of my old concepts. Uh, that I'm bringing to the surface with the help of Antonio Bryce. He's my co-writer, uh, co-script. He's a script writer and the co-writer for with me, co-plotter. And we're jamming on this so far. Um, we got some cool ideas. And I just want to share some of it with you guys as I go on development. Um, Trying to get my tools out. I got too much in this little bag. Let's see here. I need, I need that. I don't need that, but I do need these. So anyway, I'm talking low because Mrs. Monger is not feeling well. She called in sick again today, so I've been quiet. That's why I did my my uh, review of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Uh, quietly last night because she was there so hopefully um, you guys may appreciate this if you don't I totally get that too but I gotta stay quiet I can't talk too loud <sighs> all right so I'm just giving him a subtle hairstyle that makes sense and I'm getting phone call I don't need so I'm declining this is his stern look like all right Dr. Chivago <laughs> whatever the whatever the villain he's face he's facing at the time I'm trying to this is a I'm, I'm working a little differently as far as style is concerned and that's kind of what this session is about it's style over substance so I'm trying to uh, initially, when I developed him, he looked a little more like this. Uh, this was probably going to be the style I was going to do, but it's a little, maybe a little less impactful than this. Um, this actually is going to play a role in the story somehow, but, uh, you know, like this is a nice look too, but maybe that's too too clean, too simple, not as impactful. Uh, but I, ha I do want to revisit some of these designs because some of these guys are going to be some of the scientists that he works or works around his adopted father um, so I'm going to be doing some of those too but right now as of right now I want to spend a little energy on I have to get busy with some commissions again uh, as you guys know the bills are a real thing so I got to take care of that and uh, while I do that but before I do that, I should say, I want to do a little more, a little more development. So this, this version of him here looks a little too, too short. So it makes him look a little young. His head's a little big. I gotta give him a little more mass to his body. So he looks a little more robust. And I'm gonna drop his waist down a little more. So now he looks a little, a little older, a little older. Give him a little longer elbows there. So his body's a little fuller, so his head's not so large. When usually when you're doing when you're drawing kids, kids' heads are not quite proportionate yet. Uh, they're still a young a young person still has a larger dome than normal. Um, until they get until their body starts to grow into it. So I'll try to depict that here. All right. All right. So it looks like the crowd is light today. If you guys are here, sound off. 
Chris Davis, what's going on, dope, what is his power? Well, he's not that unique yet, and, and I, I wanna develop a little more of that. I'm working with Antonio on some of these ideas, but uh, he's called Comet Boy, not because he is, he's a comet, or has comet powers. Uh, obviously a comet's not that interesting. What's up, SCS Powerlifting, how you doing, man? Uh, but what he, he's kind of a, a, a variation on Superman, Shazam, He's got the, the speed, the flight, and he's got strength. Uh, but there's an, as an added feature, he does do this kind of Super Saiyan thing where he kind of he over he superpowers or he powers up, and uh, that's going to be another <clears throat> another dimension or level to his to his power. Hey, let me uh, let me do something real quick. I'm not talking into the microphone here. Let me just switch this around. Let me try this instead. Can you guys hear me better now? Does it sound better? Oops. I just gotta move my gear around a little bit so we can I can see the the chat as it comes in. Are you gonna make a comic from this? I sure am. I sure am, Holmes. It's gonna be awesome, dog. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. So yeah, so basically, there's going to be a point where he kind of powers up. He's going to, you know, go Super Saiyan, and I think his skin color is going to change. It's going to go blue, um, which I think is going to be super cool. Um, let me do this instead. Let me hold it up differently so I can see what I'm drawing. Sometimes I draw at this angle flat, and... Uh, my drawings tend to get look extended because I'm drawing at a at a weird perspective, a weird angle from the paper. So, as I said earlier, what I'm trying to do here is give Otomo the look as though I were working on uh, the same style I've been using through a lot of my big and juicy stuff, which you kind of saw a lot of on my other concept that I was developing, Soul Diver. So this is a a style that's that matches that it's more of you know inspired by the comics and graffiti and the um, video games from the 80s and 90s and I don't want to I don't want to fly through it I want to keep him it's, there's a delicate balance between keeping him looking old enough and young enough at the same time he's he's more like in his uh, he's like a tween to, to 13 years old Type of guy. Okay, just checking the chat real quick. And I keep hitting my my uh, my gooseneck a bit, making it crazy. So that yeah, there's a very fine line. If you're not, if you make the features, if his eyes are too small, he'll look too immature. If his eyes are too big, he looks more. He looks younger. You know, like babies have larger eyes. So you got to be careful. Same thing with the nose. I don't want his nose to be too pronounced, because then it that also is a determining factor in, you know, a noticing age. When they have more of this button nose, it's still a young person. They don't have to have a button button nose, but enough to to make it look. Does he understand his powers, or is he still learning about them and finds new ones along the way? That's a great question. I actually I'm, I'm working on some of those details because I, depending on how how I decide that will determine how the story goes. And that's why I've got to put a little more energy into that. So I have, I have, I can't commit to that yet. So I'm not sure yet. Um, obviously that's something that I want to work out with Antonio so we can, you know, get to the story already. Um, I'm going to, I'm, what I'm doing now is this is all going to be promotional art. This will be some of the stuff you'll see on the Indiegogo campaign page when I get it launched. Um, but you're also going to see, so you got to make sure his dome's a little larger because kids have bigger domes, even if they're not that old or not that young. My son has a giant head on his long, lanky body. It's funny. Not a giant head, you know. I'm not trying to clown on. Anyway, um, yeah. So we're we're filling in the details. So this will be some of the art you'll see on the page. I'm also going to be doing like a cover for the first issue, and uh, I'm excited about that. Actually, I'm really excited about this project. This is. This is a character that I've been kind of messing with for a long time. And uh, now I get to actually realize him. So 
I'm being careful not to go too fast. Who is the villain? Uh, that's a great, great question. We don't know his name yet, but he kind of looks like this guy as of right now. He looks like this guy. Um, he's one of the scientists. He's one of those guys. He works with his adoptive father. Dr. Wright is his name. And Dr. Wright is going to be the, the man that helps him along the way. Benjamin Hopwood says, have you seen Symbiotic Titan? There are some great kaiju versus giant robot. Oh, that's a great anime uh, animation. That was by Tartakovsky, right? Or Gendy Tartakovsky, a guy from, uh, from Samurai Jack. I loved that animation show. But where, where can I see that again? I don't think it's on, uh, anywhere right now. So this guy, the villain, is kind of like a Lex Luthor, except without the money. We'll, we'll learn more about him as we go along. I have already definitive ideas about him, but I also want to bounce that off of Antonio to get his take on stuff. I kind of see the relationship with Antonio in this situation, kind of the way John Byrne helped Mignola. I, I really feel like I have I, good ideas. I just I never put them down. So I'm learning also how to write as I'm going along, you know, so I'm, picking the brains of people. I'm not, I don't know if I'll ever be a great writer, but I love being able to put my own thoughts together and doing my own project. That's always been, and there's been a dream of mine. I don't have many dreams like as it relates to comics, but if there has been a dream, it hasn't been about drawing Marvel DC stuff. It's been about doing my own stuff and uh, owning that property. What causes him to power up? Is it just something he controls? Or does he have to do something to activate that? I think right now I'm, I'm leaning towards when he gets excited or angry. It's going to be like a, something he can, he, can, he can hardly harness it. So I don't know if that answers your question or not. Some of the other designs. This is, um, I want to play with the concept. One of these, one of these was a, um, a different look at costume colors. I did this in Photoshop. Um, I'm starting to feel, I'm kind of in between these two now. Good morning, Cosmetti. The, uh, the white and gold or white and silver, or gray. Um, or maybe this turns into a, a blue. What if it was white and blue? Like a soft blue, not a deep blue at all. I don't know. I, I, it's hard for me to see this as uh, in color like this because I always get the impression that it looks like Good morning, Javier. How are you? This this is the, the pencil color I use to draw, so I always feel like it looks like just a drawing. I don't know. I don't know. I kind of like it, but I'm still leaning towards the white and gold. I mean, it's no secret. Sorry, guys, it did it again on me. It doesn't want to. It doesn't want to work with me. There we go. <clears throat> so, you know, I don't, I don't know. But I, I, I don't, I don't have to. I'm not. I don't have to be married to that color scheme. So. I don't kind of like it. The reason why I'm considering blue is because in a comet, comet tends to be white and blue. This is flashing through space. I kind of like the blue too. I don't know. What do you guys say? All right. Everybody's, everybody's greeting each other. That's very, very good of you. Good of my crowd here. And uh, so... 
Only problem with this here is I'm giving him too many lines, so it makes him look a little old. The white and blue pattern, the yellow is more Shazam-like. You like in the white and blue? You like the blue? Hmm, interesting. I'm getting blue, I'm getting blues. Feeling blue, feeling blue. Whereas white and gray, white and silver are a good, good compromise. I think maybe his face is too too long. It might be contributing to his older appearance. Yeah, I kind of like that. No black and red. No, that's too harsh for this character. I think. I think black and red is uh, you know that's a that's an art style. That's an a. Uh, that's a, that's a series I'm doing, but I don't know. I, I considered that. Um, red's one of my favorite colors, but it's also one of my favorite flavors. <laughs> I like red candy, red juice. <laughs> Last night when I was uh, went to see Spider-Man, I, I poured out the sugar-free, um, sugar-free Minute Maid uh, fruit punch. Oh, so good. All right, so this is me trying to do my version of of uh, Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball flare, flare. Like maybe his eyes go white when he does that. Maybe his mouth is open. Maybe I go full Super Saiyan on him here. Maybe he's like, ah. That's too goofy of a mouth. I have to keep it in the same family of art here. Uh, I don't know if I missed it, but what powers does he actually have that he's aware of? So he's uh, strong, fast, flight. Uh, but he does this he, he does this power up that goes he goes almost like a nuclear thing and he turns into like do you guys remember cannonball Sam Guthrie on the new mutants <clears throat> how he, when he would fly he was he would he would became basically indestructible he could he could break through anything that's kind of what I'm thinking is happening to him he he also has these kind of like same comet punches they're basically just powered up punches, you know? Like if he was a, uh, almost like if he was Goku with the and he punches hard and energized. I love it when kids still have the big teeth. So when he flies, he leaves like a blue white and blue streak behind them like Mighty Mouse. Uh, that doesn't wrap around anything necessarily, but it, it's definitely a cool graphic device that I can use when he's in flight mode. There you go. See, this is when he's super powered up. Maybe now he's got the I mean, he looks kind of underlit when he's this way. Like energy's coming from somewhere. I don't know where the light's coming from when he's this way, but he's almost incandescent. Is that the right word? Actually, what he's going to say is this is, when he, this is when he yells out, Go, Otomo! He goes full Otomo mode. Never go full of Tomo. Let me see here. Ah! <laughs> 
So now he's got the the blown up uh, sleeve. Let's see what else. Go Atomo. Bam, thanks to down, to guess the down, the down, the down, the down. There we go. The villain steals military secrets and makes ultimate weapons when he fights Comic Boy. Lewis. Oh, thank you, Lewis. I appreciate that. What are you saying, Chris? How did he obtain his powers? Well, you know. He's actually from another another world, another planet, in another dimension. So there's going to be a little bit of multiverse action going into this. I love multiverse stories. Ba bam, do -do -do bam. Do -do. You got me geek now, Lewis. Now I'm doing beats in my head. Ideas on the villain, you have to scroll back in the comments. Oh, the villain should be a kid like him, super hacker genius who can hack, hack the city and robots to destroy Comet Boy and is a killer robot bodyguard uh, to fight Comet Boy. Oh, uh, uh, interesting, Chris, interesting. Um, no, but sort of. How about, how about that? How about I give you that? I have developed quite a bit of that already. I know, I know who the villain is. I just don't know his name yet. I haven't settled on that yet. <laughs> right on, man. Bam. Bam, bam. Okay, so. What's up, Toom? What up, Toom? Toombocalypse. What do you guys think about this? One of the things we're planning on doing for one of our tiers is uh, if you back at a certain level, I'm going to include you in the story. You can be part of the, you can be a character in the story, maybe a scientist, maybe, a, you know, a person in the background or something, but you'll have a little, little cameo in my comic. What do you guys think about that? Do you... Do you beat? What do you with it? Do I, do you I beat boxing? What is I beat boxing? Do I beat box? Yes, a little bit. My son doesn't think I do it very well. He's a nom. I'm like an OG compared to him. <laughs> does he think he is? Sounds expensive. <laughs> it might be, it might be, but not not maybe not as expensive as you think. It's just an idea for a, a a thing. I like the idea of I like the idea of it. Yeah, you see how he's got like a an energy field around him. So he's he's you know he's not he's not rich on power sets necessarily. Like he's not 
the, the, the most unique version of that kind of idea, but he is, I want him to be unique aesthetically. So I want him to have cool looks and how he, how he does what he does. And I think his hair is white as well. I've decided for that. I'm a real life cartoon, so everyone tells me. <laughs> That's funny. Nice gift back right on. This is your first storybook, right? Yes. My first official one. I've done other, I've worked on, I've co-plotted other books and indie things years and years ago. They, they're not even worth mentioning. They don't, they barely exist on the radar, but, <clears throat> um, but this is my first one that I'm producing. I've, I've been writing st story uh, concepts and ideas for years. I've got a lot, a lot of stuff and, and really good ones too. Um, Soul Diver is just one interpretation of one of those, but um, I have several great ideas that I'd like to bring to the table, but we're not ready. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. Say anything else? So there we go. Yeah, man. I like this concept here. Like he looks a little too small here. Maybe his head's too small. I don't know what I, what I did wrong here. Maybe I do this. It's supposed to look like the wind's blowing. From, but it doesn't make any sense. The wind's blowing its cape that way. Why would his cape go that way? I like this one a lot. This look looks good. Can't wait. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate that, man. What's up, Jose? What's up? So let's just let's just color in for the sake of conversation what this is here, so we can give a little bit of context. Uh, let's see here. Not context, but at least, you know, a visual context. So this is going to be blue, white and blue. I, I, I think I'm on board with that. But I, I you know, red, though, looks so good. Um, what does it say? How was the Spider-Man movie? Bro. I, I, I've been telling everybody, man, I was not really on board with Miles. You know that. You know, I've been very critical of Miles Morales over the years and i can say that i still don't care for him in the comics that said holy gorgonzola that movie was fan freaking tastic bro it was awesome and i don't and i'm not saying that i mean i am i was genuinely thrown back by how good that that was genuinely thrown back by that i was like what am i watching right now what sorcery is this So I think, and, and it's got a great New York flavor to it, bro. Like, I, it, it reminded me of home, but it was different. Um, much of it takes place in Brooklyn, but that was good. You know, and I'm from the Bronx, so there you go. Yeah, and, and, and it's some really cool concepts they put in there that I, I don't want to give away yet, but I don't want to spoil it for you guys. But it's good stuff, really good stuff. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do something here. Maybe I'll switch this guy's cape around a bit. So I wanted this to be kind of like a
drop his eyelids down a bit. So he's looking a little more, a little more down at you, like, now, now, Dr. Evil Guy. That's not what we do. Come on, come on. <laughs> it's not like I'm talking to a child. Now, now, Junior. We don't do that here. Spider Ham was awesome. Well, you know, I will be back in it. Finally able to get the black and red of one of your original characters. Yes, yes. How was the, okay, I already answered that. Yes, yes, yes. Man, Tomb, I appreciate you, man. You're such a great customer and a supporter, man. I, I and all of you guys, because Medi, I appreciate your, your hanging out with me and supporting me with the commission requests and stuff. Um, that being said, if you guys are interested in any commissions, I'm trying to kind of um, build up some my my uh, my acorns, if you will. I'm trying to store as much as I can for the winter, um, because typically the Jan December into January, then January into February tend to be my slow months, and I can use the. Uh, so I'm not asking for, for anything for free. Although, if you're interested in supporting me like that, you can always go to my Patreon. Not my Patreon. Well, you can go to Patreon, but you can also go to my my PayPal. And uh, I will, it's, uh, it's paypal.me slash jerkmonger. You can do that. But uh, I also do commissions. So you can reach out to Andy at thelabcomics at gmail.com. And he can get you squared away. Yeah, I'm not trying to take any handouts necessarily. I'd rather work for it if I can. Of course, I won't turn a, I won't turn a gift away either. <laughs> Let's see. Cam, what's going on? Javier says, I'm at work and wish I could hear what you're saying, but this, what's that? This bandsaw cutting metal is too loud and my headphones are in my truck. Hello. I'll watch the replay later to hear what was said. Still watch it. Right on, man. Thank you. Ken says, I can attest to the commission process. I just got mine. Turnaround was very fast, and Andy was very responsive. Yeah, he's 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 the secret weapon in my in our in our company. So as I said yesterday, uh, get on board. We're gonna be doing some cool stuff. So all right, so now I'm kind of shifting into a different expression. This is one of the ways I kind of get to know my character better. I, I, I draw him or her uh, in different positions, different expressions, trying to keep that going as much as possible. Packaging was also excellent, Cam. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. I'll pass that along to to uh, Andy. Tim says, are you, oh, you are going to work for it? That dual Walking Dead commission you are doing is for my wife. It has to be shelf, does it has to be a top shelf effort, Elliot? Top shelf. Well. I got something. I got news for you, Tomb. All my stuff is top shelf. I don't know if you've heard, but I am the jerk monger. Boom. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to give him this. This character is supposed to be a gentle soul. I, I'm drawing him very aggressively here and there. I'm going to try to give him a an expression of you know awe. Commission perhaps early 2019. Ooh, long shot sounds cool. I should read the video title. Is it? The Comet Boy or Comet? It's Comet Boy Otomo. I mean, some people may call him the Comet Boy, but he's Comet Boy Otomo. That's the code name.
Okay. I like that so far. He's I have it almost like a like a bug is on his nose or something. I'm interested in learning more about Comic Boy. I saw Tonio's video about it, but I didn't see the full interview yet. Well, it's it is still we're still developing it. Um, there's 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 some hard notes I have for it, and then we're kind of trying to fill in some gaps. So we're purposely sharing some, but not all the information yet. Uh, that will be, we'll definitely be, have all that tightened up by the time the campaign rolls around. We're looking at launching probably uh, by the second or third week of January, um, as far as uh, get, getting the campaign launched. I'm, I'm a little concerned about that because I, I feel like that's not the best time to launch something like this. But, you know, to be honest, this is not the same as a retail thing. This is, this is kind of like an investment thing. Hopefully, uh, enough of you guys will see it as valuable enough to, to, you know, commit some cash, even though the holidays have just passed. But I think, though, I think in the long run, it's going to be strong. So uh, this will be the, the... Well, thanks, Cam. I appreciate that. You're excited about this collaboration. Yeah, me too. Me too. Very excited. Geek Out Loud says, thank you very mucho, Mr. Otomo. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Otomo. Yeah, we're excited, man. You know, a lot of you guys have been wondering when I was going to produce my my first thing, and you know, um, you know, I, I I'm not as interested in being a a a, uh, a work for hire guy um, necessarily. I'm not saying I wouldn't do it. I'm just saying when it comes to it has to be a very special project for me to put down. You know, I, I, if I'm going to get a job, I'll just get a job because I don't, I don't enjoy drawing this stuff that much um, to just do it for anyone. I, I like drawing what I want to draw. So sometimes I think that I'm, you know, if I was to go back to work, um, I would probably not work as an artist anymore. I, if I had to get a, a day job again. A typical day job. I don't think I'd do it as an artist. I did that for 20 years and I was kind of unhappy. Christmas will have passed, but I have a trump card. Birthday in February. Shazam! <laughs> very cool, man. Very, very cool. So here we go. Planning, planning out here a hair. The hair from this angle is also important. These are some of the things I think about when I'm drawing, like how am I gonna draw his hair from this angle? How am I gonna draw his hair from that angle? And uh, just keep coming up with solutions. And it just makes it just makes me more confident when it comes time to draw this character over and over again. Because I don't wanna learn that while I'm drawing it. I wanna learn that here at this stage. As part of it is the, this, this part of it. I'm also learning about, you know, I'm, I'm putting together my notes. I have a, let me show you what I have so far. This is my, Comet Boy Otomo uh, index cards so far. I have a few here I can show you. You know, these are some of the ideas. Um, Dr. W is a doting father figure to, to A. A is Otomo. He makes breakfast and sends him off to school with bagged lunches. Um, Otomo wants to find a way back to his home world. Dr. W is a bit reluctant. You know, I learned this this approach from Doug, so I've been doing that. I have a, a bunch of them here that I've I've been kind of filling out. So those are like my my notes about my character, uh, things that I've been thinking about over the years. Uh, it, it, this story, <clears throat> because I'm doing it this way, is actually a little bit of an amalgamation of several stories that I've had in the hopper for years now, and I'm just kind of putting them all together here for. There's another variation. There's another version of Flick that we we'll, we may not see uh, now because of what I'm doing here, but um, because of how I'm handling it. So we'll see how that goes. You know. <clears throat> Hopefully, you guys will will dig that. So I don't like what's happening here. Don't take. Hygiene lessons from Doug. <laughs> you know what's funny? Every time I go to a, a public restroom, I think of Doug now. Every time. And I'm like, oh, Doug, you just, you wrecked my whole universe with that nonsense. 
Now I gotta reevaluate my my own life. <laughs> I've been I've been lied to all these years. So Tomo is definitely a tender hearted character, although he's a teenager, you know, he's going through stuff. And so what happens when a teenager starts having teenage problems and also has powers of a god? What do you do with that? Uh, and that's not a that terribly original idea, but I, you know, he's also adopted and I want to explore that as well. And that has been kind of explored in things like Smallville and stuff, but I want to include some of my own, you know, I don't always get to observe is also how how the adopted parents that's one of the things i want to explore in the story is both my children are adopted and um you know my wife and i for a variety of reasons we couldn't have children and uh and there's these there's these fears you have when you adopt kids that are not of uh, from your you know obviously you didn't give birth to or you didn't you didn't they're not yours biologically um you know what's going to happen when uh, they get older, what's going to happen when they get old enough? Do they want to seek out their parents? Do they, I think, you know, do you tell them they're adopted sooner or later? If you, if you do it later, will they think you're a liar? Will they, will they, even though you're trying to, you think you're protecting them, are you really protecting them? Or are you protecting yourself? You know, those are, those are real, those are real thoughts, guys. I don't, I don't know. I know that maybe that might seem shallow, but coming from a person who's who's experiencing it i mean i'm literally experiencing it i've we adopted them when they were little we went through hell man get getting our kids and you know, it was not easy it was not easy a lot of faith a lot of believing in god and trusting him to provide because i didn't have the money to adopt my son and that was a tremendous story in and of itself what's up dark throne is this an all ages story I would say, yeah, I would say it's at least P PG. Um, bless you for adopting kids. Think that takes special kind of caring. Hey, man, thank you, Cam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, we there, there are kids, you know. One of my favorite things that came from the adoption the, the, at, the, at the courthouse was the way that the, the judge read, you know, the, the, the information to us. And it was, it was, it was so deep, man, about, you know, as though he were, as though he were and she were bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. These are now my children, you know, and I'm like, wow, man, you know, but what you don't, what you don't deal with there is the future. What, what, what does, what does a young person who now has autonomous thinking, what, what, what does he or she, how does he or she feel about that? You know, and, you know, one of the things that we learned in our classes was that uh, males tend to not care that much about that sort of stuff. Males who are adopted tend to kind of live life and they're like, you know what, you're my parents and then they, they want to keep it simple. A lot of times it's females that are the ones that are more inquisitive about their, their history and, and stuff. And so it's like, you know, I, I think about that all the time. You know, I, I, my daughter's precious to me. And, you know, is that going to come up one day? You know, you're not even my dad. That breaks my heart to think about that. You hear that sometimes in stories. That's why, that's one of the reasons why I was so, one of my pet peeves about Man of Steel, the movie, isn't just that I didn't like the movie for some of the Superman reasons. It's also, I remember when, when Clark sees his Martha, first of all, the house looked terrible. You'd think a guy with all those powers would clean up his mom's house. Family is more than blood, that's for sure. But uh, anyway, he gets there, and then his his say, "Hey, mom, I, I, f I found my parents," you know. And I remember thinking, like, how 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 in, how inconsiderate is that? And you could see they tried to address that, cause, but it was very subtle, uh, which I got to give him credit for. Um, I got to give Zack Snyder credit for that. That he 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 tackled the idea, even though he didn't. It wasn't explicit, and you could see Martha's face. That it was a little upsetting to her, and I and I remember thinking, oh, it left us such a bad taste in my mouth because those are real fears that we have as parents of adopted kids, and um, you know, that's that's just reality. I'm not, you know, I don't want you, I don't want anybody to feel sorry for us because we we picked this life, but uh, I think his eyes are too close together. 
But, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, we're going to have to have that talk that other parents of their biological kids don't have to talk about. You know, um, when Thor in Avengers makes a joke about about Loki being adopted, I remember thinking, ah, oh. I, I remember that, how, how I was concerned for my kids. That's what I was most concerned about. That's a Lafayette. Lafayette, I don't have a finished story yet. Shut up. I need to get our script together. Um, I remember sitting there and just kind of like cringing in my seat, hoping that my, my kids didn't get that. And I know they did. I know they did. And it's a joke, you know? Ugh, it's making me emotional just thinking about it, to be honest. For, it's a joke in a movie. And I'm not, I'm not one of those guys like, you can't talk about that. You've offended me. I don't care. It's life, man. You know, before we had kids, it was I, my my sister used to used to say I was adopted and stuff, and as a as a way to kind of get me upset. Although I knew it wasn't true. Yeah, Lafayette, my kids are adopted. Uh, so yeah, you know, it's it's uh, you know, it, it's those are real. And but I'll tell you this though. I'll tell you why the adoption thing is so beautiful. That it was worth it for me. And, and I'm going to get a little religious with you guys, but just bear with me. Just, just hear my heart. I don't, you don't have to believe what I say just, just, or, or believe in what I believe. Just hear what I'm trying to convey. You know, one of the ideas that we espouse in Christianity is that while, while I was still lost and dead in my trespasses, God came down and, and in the form of Jesus Christ in a, and, and became like me so that he can die in my place. And in that way, uh, the writers of the New Testament say that we became a, uh, adopted as sons and daughters of the Most High God. And that's a powerful thing that, that when, when God tells, when the, when the story about the wedding feast comes out, the parable, he says, go into the highways and the byways, go to the ones who I didn't come for, and tell them that they are all invited into the feast. You know, God. wow, man, that's deep to me. Sorry. You know, that's that's what adoption is. Adoption is saying you you don't have the blood right to to an inheritance, but I give it to you as though you were always my blood, as though I always was. And. Um, you know, that's, that's me, man. That's, that's where my heart is, you know? So, so when I'm talking to Antonio about themes that I'm wanting to put in there, you know, if this is my story, you know, if I, if I wanted to do a goofy comic, I'd, I'd go work for Marvel and draw Wolverine or something. Let them tell goofy stories with characters that don't mean anything anymore. But, uh, but if I'm gonna put my own blood, sweat and tears into something, I at least wanted to communicate something that's about me and uh, more than just, you know. So this character, before he became a Tomo, the code name for my project was called Flick or Flicker and uh, a flicker of light. And a Tomo has always been a variation of my son, Aiden. So, so before people say stupid things like, why is he white? or he's part of the because my son is white and that's who I adopted and I don't care and you guys can kiss my Puerto Rican arse <laughs> uh, sorry I didn't mean to get that far. that was negative I don't want to be negative I'm just saying that happens too much on the Twitters you got it too I'm sorry I maybe I shared too much but I appreciate you guys been listening regardless. Thanks for sticking around. So, yeah, man. So adoption is important, man. And and, and think about this. You know, when sometimes I tell my son, you know, it's another theme that I want in this story. I've told them before, you know, it's sometimes it's easy when you look at adopting, you, you kind of, sometimes people see it as just a charity and we'll say things like, you know, you, we'll tell our kids sometimes, you were born for us. But 
I realize now as I've gotten older, you know, I'm 45 years old now, my son's been with us for most of his life, the, the, the majority of his life. He was only 11 months when he came to us. Um, you know, I, I think that I was really born for him. <clears throat> Funny. I was born for them. Because <sighs> I don't know what my life would be like with without my son, my daughter. <clears throat> Ooh, that got deep fast. <laughs> Sorry. 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 So this is a love song, not just to Shazam and an Astro Boy, but Aiden is my Astro Boy. And uh, dedicate this to God for bringing me great kids from outer space. <laughs> and finding this chump and giving him a chance to raise them. I'm not perfect, but I'm doing my best. And I will die for them. There you go. <clears throat> Max Hammer, Spanish every five to six. We're sorry, I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> it's the 38.7% uh, quotient of Latino Spanish uh, injected every time I speak. I should only, you know. So I was going to La Tienda to buy some leche. Does that work that way? God, I hate that. I am definitely not about that. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you, guys. Right on, record this and play it on the campaign. People will melt. <laughs> no, no, I don't want nobody to melt. I want you guys to support it. I want you guys to back it. That's what I want. El corazón hace la familia. Right on, thank you. Que leche tomas. Uh, I, can, I don't know how to say it in Spanish. Almond? <laughs> Almondo? <laughs> That's stupid. I don't. I don't know how to say almond. My vocabulary is very limited. This is going to be the intense look. The intense. Like you. Don't get to do that anymore. You put her down. That's one of the reasons why I want to. I want to. I, I when I talk about this, I I, I bring up um, Incredibles a lot because there's some great family stuff in there. There's some things that are treated with respect and innocence. Just, just read well in that format. So I, I like. I like. Uh, I love that Incredibles gave us a way to talk about family using superheroes. And uh, that's why to this day, Incredibles 1 is still the best Fantastic Four movie that we'll ever see, probably. Uh, 
Uh, dark though, I, I drink almond milk. I don't drink milk anymore. I, I don't, uh, except for milkshakes from time to time, which I shouldn't drink, but. Put her down. So I'm gonna throw in some that that shading that I'm talking about there when I think when he powers up. here I think I need to give him that bigger eye thing I'm gonna drop his brows down and do this that's that's more of the intense look right there you probably can't see it very well I'm uh give him a little beady eyes there maybe his hair drops or flops sometimes maybe in the rain or something You know what's crazy is the more I think of, I don't know if if, uh, if Antonio's still here, but the more I think about this story, the more I think about, you know, I want to tell this bigger story now. I don't know if one book is enough to tell it the way I think we want to tell it. So I might have to adjust my the, 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 the plot a little bit because I'm finding, I'm discovering some new things about the character as I think about them. It's one of the cool things about the process that I enjoy is that I love I love hearing when writers tell me things like the characters just told them who they were. I love that. Do you think Otomo dresses different sometimes just to make his dad upset? And does he go like my dad, my son now who wants he walks around with he's trying to be emo. He even says, I think I'm emo. I'm like, you shut up. If you if you have to think you're emo, you're not emo. Yeah, I like this. I like this idea. I just want, I'm just trying to explore his range of emotions. You know, does he does he emote this way? And if he does, then this might become the little visual bible of what he would look like if he emoted for a scene like this. You know, where he's angry or devastated or that's important to me as an artist and as the creator of the character. Like, what does he? How does he think? What does he? What is he about? You know, what does he dream for, dream about? What, what does he want in life? What, what what does he hate? You know. And sorry, sorry, sorry. I did it again. Uh, uh, needs to flip again. There we go. Uh, just don't take any cream from John May. <laughs> no, so I haven't had uh, almost like straight cream, really. Do you have a recipe for that? I'd like to learn that. Maybe this is a beat up. Because one of the things about Tomo is he's not indestructible. He's not, he's not so powerful. I want him to bleed. Let me see. How do you milk an almond? Uh, by its udders, geek out loud. By its udders, clearly. Yes, it's really good. Kind of messy to make, though. Oh, hmm. Yeah, send me, the, send me a recipe or at least a, a site I can go visit to, to talk. I can always just look it up. I'm curious. I'm curious enough to discover what that might look like. Are you...
Are you guys excited at all about the Shazam movie? This is a good page. There's some good expressions on this. So I'm going to fill in this spot. I like to fill in. Looks like fun. I hope so. It could be fun, but I'm not sure. Is that finally a fun movie for DC? I think, I think I'm going to get a lot out of Aquaman that way. You are sounding like the villain. I, I want him to bleed. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I just, I like it when super, I'm not talking about like gushing blood. I'm, thinking, I'm just saying like, you know, that he gets beat up and he bleeds a little from his mouth. Like, uh, like Bruce Timm's, uh, Bruce Timm is another influence on me in storytelling. I would be excited about Shazam if they announced it was not part of the Snyderverse. Isn't it not, though? Max Hammer says, Shazam is the only Captain Marvel I want to see. Max, that is correct. I really like these sketch pages. Thank you, Kuzmeti. We will make a new crew of milkshake comic skate version. <laughs> hey, I tell you what I might do as I do these. I have to talk to Antonio. This might be something I can do as part of the, uh, once I scan these, I might make these as one of the, uh, one of the um, tiers is that you get, you get some of the original sketch design pages. Let's see. Shazam and Aquaman are the movies I'm looking forward to. So am I, man. I'm really excited about Aquaman. I'm more than I thought I would be. Uh, Wolf Milkshake Boys. <laughs> oh, God, that's horrible. It's part of the Snyderverse as of now. They had clips showing references to Batman vs. Oh, yeah, they did, didn't they? Mm. Cam says, yes, make those a perk. Do it. Yes, I like. Uh, I want sketch pages. Yes, 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 please. I can go for another original sketch page. Cool, cool. That sounds good. Yeah, I have all these different sketches already. You know, so hopefully when that time comes, I guess it'll be a, I guess we'll do a first come, first serve basis type of deal. This is obviously digital, so this won't be useful to anyone. But there will be, these sketches will exist in the book, though. Um, at least m much of them will in the uh, in the back of the book. It's part of the, I want. what I'm trying to do is, I do 40 pages of story and eight pages of extras. So, yo, I'm still here talking to a sculptor about a dark Santana statue. Word, that's awesome. Awesome. So let me see here. I need one of him in pain. Like ah, ah, no. What does it look like when he's in pain? It's important that my characters have some some weaknesses, and that they can't be. I don't want them to be so stoic that they can't. You can't relate to them, and I and I want them to be. You know, that's the one thing about Marvel I do dig is that their characters were approachable. So I'm gonna enjoy that quite a bit. Um, it's 3 a.m. I got to run. Night, Elliot, Antonio, and everyone. All right, Brett, be good, too. I appreciate you hanging out, man. Uh, I was thinking about how special extras can be included in IGG campaigns without insane effort. They can be like a raffle. Everyone has a chance for them. I was thinking about how special extras can be included in IGG campaigns without insane... Oh, that's a good idea. If we do like a, a raffle for the, all the people get some, you know, get a random something or other. So does Dark Santana say... Oh, 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 ha, <laughs> ha, oh, 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 instead of signing every book, huh? Hmm. Yeah, that's another thing, too, that signing thing's going to be a challenge. You know, we, we've been talking about this already, you know, thankfully, um, Antonio and I don't live that far, uh, that far apart from each other, but far enough that it, we have to at least travel by plane to get there. Um, to each other so how would we get to do that i don't know man i like what these guys are saying about doing the extra page and having it inserted that's that sounds good to me uh, like zach is having problems fulfilling signing so many books 
yeah, yeah, yeah. That 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 is a challenge, you know. So one of the things we did talk about. Well, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't talk about it right now because I don't know how much I can commit to much, a lot of this. It just depends on how things go. I I gotta be careful also that as the artist, I'm not committing too much in terms of drawings and sketches and things like that because there might be I might not have enough time. I, I might just have enough time to produce the material, not also decorate. You know, like signing the book can be. I, I remember I I've done some stuff. Oh, that reminds me. I gotta take care of some work. Um, signing the book. Signing the books was a, a, a good chunk of time that I had to take out for that. I'm having a hard time drawing this image. Um, and so, um, yeah, it's definitely challenges to overcome, you know, and that's something that sometimes people don't think about when, you know, when you guys are, are not you guys, you guys are great, but some people are very critical of this process. And I'm trying to, one of the things I'm trying to make sure I express to anyone and everyone, when you come to, when you come to a, 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 an independent creator, you can't, I, I, I might be competing with Marvel's, you know, content, but I can't compete with Marvel's distribution um, model. They, they, they have an army of of workers doing what they do. So I, I don't have that. I don't have guys do handling my my social media. I don't have people handling, you know, running my website. I don't. I, that's all done by me. And if you're going to get something signed, you know, it's not like a, a separate company. Uh, uh, like a uh, what's a good example of this? This looks terrible, by the way. Um, I don't know why I'm having, you know what, it's not an expression I usually draw and not from this angle, so I got to think about it. Um, you know, how do you get this stuff shipped and how do you get the, the cheapest price? And think about how many times Diamond gets books sent. You guys ever show up to a comic shop on, on, on Tuesday when they're still bagging and boarding and you ever see how, how here the, the owners of the shops complain because the books came in damaged? That happens all the time. Um, if that happens to me, if my book shows up damaged, I have to replace it. If a book shows up from Marvel damaged, oh well, or from Diamond, oh well, you just turn it back in and maybe you get a credit, maybe you don't, or you don't get them fulfilled in time, or oh well, deal with it, you know? I suppose you can make signed copies a separate perk and limit the number to however many you are willing to sign. Well, that's the, that's the rub though. I feel like if you're paying the premium price for the book, you're paying for that premium treatment of the book as well. So I don't mind signing. I'm just saying that there's a, there is definitely, it's, it's something that you have to kind of allow, you have, you have to have a, a measure of grace for that part of the process because it's not simple, you know? And I just did black and red books and I didn't have that many backers. So while it was a successful campaign, it wasn't as, nearly as, as um, dense uh, uh, for fulfillment purposes as Ethan's or, or, or Richard's uh, or Zach's, however you want to call them, uh, campaign. So, you know, you have to have some measure of grace. I know it, I know you want to hold them to the standard of Marvel. And I think that's probably what some of these creators are trying to leverage is that you know, you're not going to get the same product from them as you get from Marvel, except you're going to get content that you enjoy. Or, or you're going to get content that you want to support or something that's more aligned with you as a customer. Um, yeah, you got over 2000 books to sign. Exactly. Exactly, Antonio. So like, you know, if, if Antonio, if something were to happen and he breaks his wrist, his hand, are you going to get mad because he couldn't sign all those books on time? And you're going to say, oh, see, he didn't fulfill. Because that's the kind of way we treat like Walmart. Because Walmart doesn't produce anything. Walmart just has stuff that they sell from other people. So, you know, you can't hold the indie guy or gal uh, to that same exact standard because these are apples to oranges. Now, can you hold them accountable to the content? Yes. Can you hold them accountable to never getting it fulfilled? Yes. 
Um, but if it's, you know, if, if there's a pause, please don't, don't freak out because that just means that they're trying to get it done as quickly as possible. When I hear Zach talk about his stuff, I can tell he's trying not to be, he, I mean, I'm not making excuses for anything. We're definitely going to do the best we can to get it out even earlier if we can, this book. But I'm telling you right now, though, that, you know, listening to the stories, I can see why someone like Zach is having a hard time getting everything out there right on time. Not to mention he's got to get the printer stuff squared away. Not to mention he's got to get those papers signed. They got to get it back to the printer, then insert them into the book when they, they you know, those are, those are all time consuming challenges. And trust me, um, I'm just saying that because we are so accustomed to a, a microwavable society. When you go artesian, you're, you're, you're definitely paying more money, but you're getting a quality, you're getting a handcrafted product practically. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, this is the nightmare of the artist, losing the function of your hand or your vision. Oh yeah, that's a terrible that thought. Trust me. We don't have to freak out anti-CG lunatics. No, customers will handle that. Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's what I'm saying. And there's some people, though, I've, I've heard people say things like, oh, you guys, that they're complaining. I didn't get it on time. This is, I wonder if some of those people are just hacks or, or people trying to, what they call trolls, just maybe even bought the stuff just so they can complain about it if it doesn't come right out on time. I don't know. But I'm just saying that, that, I'm not, you know, we're just talking here. Have a measure of grace for some of these guys who are, you know, some of these guys have full time jobs. You know, Antonio has a full time. Oh, keeps doing that. Ah. They're totally uncustomed. They admit it, not realizing how stupid their claims are. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah, Antonio has a full time job. He's not, he doesn't have, you know, the unlimited disposal. You know, I work from home and I still have to work on commission. I still have to work on stuff that pays the bills. So, you know, that's why I like to highlight, and I find I, I'm just I'm just making it part of the education process for you guys. I'm highlighting for you guys when we talk about this stuff that there's a level of ex, the, the the level of execution that you may be expecting from a from a warehouse full of product is not the same you can expect from an individual um, producing everything himself getting it out. I mean, you don't think about like companies like Amazon with all their employees or Walmarts and the, all the people that have in those warehouses, those people are dedicated resources to just get stuff on shelves. Imagine you have all that stuff in a garage or, or an apartment or, or in a, in a, in a, you know, this is just, again, I'm not trying to, I don't want to come across like, oh, he's just making excuses for failure. No, I'm just saying that as we move into a time where, you know, the Etsy's and 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 this sort of thing kind of um can you send me a link a link to to this conversation i don't i don't know how to do that from here i'm do, i'm doing it off the i'm not doing it off the maybe we'll come back later and we'll do some more uh, i'm doing it off my phone i don't know how to do that from my phone cuz it's not a hangout is there a way to do that Uh, yeah, I don't have a way to do that, I don't think. Uh, they don't understand the economy of scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's exactly true, you know. Um, post your comment, Antonio. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure to read it if you have something you want to say about that. But yeah, it, it's it's just one of those things that we have to. It keeps doing it. Ugh. The attacks, Ethan, and cyber fraud being late is ridiculous. I want the book as much as the next person, but complaining and whining is not going to speed up the process. No, it's not. It's not going to speed up the process, and it doesn't work that way because um, it doesn't work that way because in order for Ethan, Ethan's just one individual producing the book. You know, again. You know, if, if you have a book that's running late, that everybody wants, they can't wait to get it at Marvel or DC, they have editors there. And one of the jobs of the editors is to have some other artists on, on standby. That's, the, that's how I did my work for DC. I was a standby artist and I, got, I helped out on um, Harley Quinn Power Girl on several issues. 
And, you know, that was my first big break. <sighs> and it didn't amount to much. They also didn't even care of how the art looked. They just wanted it to be as uh, done, you know? Uh, wait, Marvel has editors? Could have fooled me. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so, yeah, I'm not saying that you don't have something to complain about, or you can't, you, I'm not saying you can't say anything about not ha having your stuff on time. I'm just saying that, yes, you can say that, but it doesn't mean you're not, you may not be taking all this, all the process into consideration. That's, that's really what I'm trying to say. So as we move into this new, but this happens every time a technology shifts, you know, there's an expectation of how things used to be, how come I can't get it right away? You know, um, like people are so used to getting, I, I've gotten in trouble with people because I didn't respond to their tech. You know how many platforms I get messages on now? And sometimes I used to only get it through email and then Facebook. And then came, uh oh, oh, some package arrived. And then comes, um, then Twitter and Instagram. I have like, I got like 17 different places to find messages. And then on top of that, I have a business email and a personal email. And then I have people who say, I, I sent you a message or I Facebooked you. I'm like, I don't know. I don't even look at Facebook anymore. Younger generation is being trained to expect things immediately and for free. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. As we start to shift, you know, and, the, and what, what the problem with immediate and free is what you guys are getting from Marvel right now. You're getting fast turnaround product that is not what you're hoping for as far as quality. That's okay. But that's, that is the exchange. That's, that is what we, what, what you guys were demanding. You not you guys, what we all were demanding. That's what we got. We got, we got a bunch of stuff that we don't really care about. It's like, yeah, you can get stuff for free from China, but a lot of times that stuff may not be the best quality because they're doing mass production over there, you know, but, or people lose jobs or whatever, you know, so you have people like, I lost my job, but I can't afford, I can only shop at Walmart. Well, you can't, you can't have it both ways, necessarily. Is part of what's leading to comics decline? People read illegal scan of books. Uh, I don't think that's the decline, man. I don't think that that's the decline. I think that's a symptom of the problem. I think the problem is, and it's been the problem all along, comics today are just not well written. Uh, they don't, they're not thought through. It's the reason why Comics Gate exists. is because these books are just not that good. And they're charging more money for it. Yeah, I, I I don't care for the floppies anymore. They're not they're not useful to me anymore. But as a customer, I I either go digital or I buy trades. And the only reason why I buy trades is they have special stuff in the background. That's why I want to put special stuff in the back of my book because that's what I like. So so people don't want to spend. I don't know, man, like that Batman 50 book, it's so frustrating what came out of that. And, and, and DC of the two companies is doing a better job than Marvel. But I'm telling you, though, that that was that was that was the worst J.R. Dallas moment, <laughs> sort of. I don't know. You guys don't even know what Dallas is. Um, when they come in, they just drop this. Oh, yeah, we were just kidding. What? And everybody invested so much in that. That's not, I'd say what else is hurting is, is this uh, market that's all about collect. Like, you have to have every cover. And it just happens, you know. Trades are fine. What I mean are hard copies that I can sit and read, just my preference. No, no, I'm, I'm with you. But I will tell you this, though, Cam. I will tell you this. Who shot JR? Uh, mm -hmm. Speaking about my kids, both of them spend massive amounts of their, their time and whatever money they spend it online, this next generation, comics are gonna necessarily become artesian. Not because, it's not gonna happen because we wanted it to, it's gonna happen because that's the only format that, that, that the market will abide. I'm just saying, brace yourself. Um, this thing that, that Viz is doing, uh, Shonen Jump, for two dollars a month, you get a full library of stuff, and, and the package is is the way it's set up. I was t I was listening to I don't know if it was uh, who said this. 
I think it was listening to one of the people talk about it, about the Shonen Jump thing. Well, I don't know that it's dying. I think it's going to be preserved. You know, it's like it's like the Constitution is in the, of the United States is, is it's hidden behind a bunch of glass. It's going to be preserved, and you're going to have to pay to see it. And you're going to. I think that's what is kind of modeled here in the. Hey, Rob, how are you doing? In the Indiegogo uh, Kickstarter thing, you know, you you have to pay for stuff like shipping. Uh, that's going to be cost that you're going to have to pay, just like if you bought something on eBay or or anywhere else. Um, and if you're only looking for something with free shipping, you might not get it because it, the, the cost of shipping is so high for, for indies, you know? All comics will go digital. I think they will go digital, but they will also exist in physical form, but at a, at a higher cost level. It'll, it'll be more like this. Uh, my, 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 my best friend gets, just gave this to me as a gift. This is the uh, Superman art from DC. It's hard cover. It's got a beautiful spine. The dust cover is okay, but I'll tell you what's beautiful is even this. It looks leather, leather, leather esque. You know, look how pretty this is. You know, and this I forget how much this cost. This must have been a, at least forty bucks. Um, doesn't say it here. Doesn't say the price, but it was it wasn't cheap. And look how pretty. Look at the presentation. The paper's archival. This is the kind of stuff I think we're going to start paying more for as we move along in the future. And that's what will, comics will look like the way that we remember it. Otherwise, it'll be digital. So, you know, just brace yourselves. It's, it's coming. It's not a bad thing. It's just a bad thing. Um, digital web comics are the future, like it or not, says Daniel Lieber. I agree with that. This TKO thing is interesting. Not sure if it will work, but it's worth a shot. Yeah, that's the one where they're doing digital and they're also doing like box sets of books. That's another way to handle it. That's another way to kind of treat it like and then release the whole thing at once. It's just weird to release it in comic form if you're not going to put it in a store, but uh, whatever. To me, a monthly floppy comic says Geek Out Loud with ads should never be more than three bucks. That's why Alterna rocks. I'm willing to buy anything they make because there's no buyer's remorse, even if it's mediocre. I totally agree with that. So that's the other way that comics will exist. Is they, I think, if they go back to newsprint. But again, the average comic customer feels like the the standard must be the more expensive presentation. And so that's what I'm saying. We want we can't have it both ways. You can't have it both ways. I like collecting floppies, says Maxheimer, but I read digital. Getting older, my eyes struggle with my tiny print on page. My iPad can zoom in. You know what's funny about that, Max? I have the same uh, same end result for me because I like to be able to zoom in. Like I'll, I'll expand on my computer a comic that I purchased, say on Comicsology, I'll blow up the art page so I can see the art better. If I'm using it for reference, especially. So that's always been something I find very useful. Uh, Cam says, I think it's important for people to not, to not lose sight of the fact that you get what you pay for and shouldn't expect things for free. People deserve to be paid for their work. I think that's very true too, Cam. Uh, Rodwell Stevens says, I think that's how Doug wants to present his books. Yep, yep, it is. And it's a great way to do it, by the way. Daniel Liebart says, some web comics are getting print on demand even there, even, I guess what I'm trying to say, even though they were free to read. Well, because there is still a market for it. And, you know, Cam, for example, is an ex is a, a person who, who, who represents that market, who still enjoys the floppy. So if there's still a floppy product and someone's willing to buy it, you know, they, you can get it. But print on demand is not inexpensive either. So again, it just goes back to just understanding the limitations and then understanding how, what, what we got to do to overcome those limitations. And it may cost us a different amount of money than what we're used to paying today, but it doesn't mean it has to be exorbitant either, you know? Cam says, because I'm really old. No, Cam, I think that there's a, plenty of people who enjoy physical anything, you know? Look how, look how vinyl is kind of making a return in, in, in Walmart, of all places, I've seen vinyls being sold at Walmart. It's just people still enjoy the tactile nature of some of these things that we enjoy. But I think at the same time, we just have to be prepared for this next generation. You know, I, I think one of the mistakes I think that these companies have made is that they're saying, oh, we want to get, we're trying to get new customers. So 
my opinion is that they are trying to get it in the wrong places. They feel like the new customers may be these quote unquote SJW customers or people who have far left philosophies, political or whatever. And those people have a right to exist. The problem is though, as we keep suggesting, maybe they're not spending as much money or it's not that they don't buy necessarily. It's that, even, well, I'm going to grant them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they do buy, but there's not enough of them that buy. That's the, that's the other side of the problem is the, the volume of people that actually believe those ideas don't compare numbers, uh, numbers wise to the people who don't. So those of us who enjoy Spider-Man as he is, outnumber those who want him to change into something else. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't change him. It just means that you're you're going up, fighting an uphill battle. So if you look at it that way, then you, what you kind of have to do is catering to the 10%. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's about right. Let me read the, let me read some of the comments before I forget to do that. Uh, I hope to make a digital comic. Well, just hope, you know what, Dark Throne, make comics and then find digital platforms to present some of those comics. Because you could always present it in floppy form too. Um, Daniel Lieber says, future is digital, but analog for those who want to pay extra for it. Yep. Cam says, I've considered eliminating the bulk of my collection, keeping a smaller amount of my favorite books, just so much story space. Well, that's the other problem. So we're definitely, especially as, as everything becomes collectible, now we've got pops, we've got toys, we've got books. So those things, you know, you should, that's why if you're going to spend your money on it, be, let it be a considerate purchase, you know, and, and thoughtful because you're going to invest not just time and money on it. You're also going to invest space, which can be a challenge as well. Because uh, Betty says, I'm not old and I collect vinyl. I prefer to read floppies and actual books. Fair enough. And that's my point. But and, and and I'm just saying that that number, that crowd, as the generations continue to advance, is shrinking, um, making way for a crowd that is more interested in something uh, easily accessible through a digital flow. You know, like people have uh, 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 an ecosystem in their home, like the people that use Apple TV and Apple phones and Apple computers. They've, they've, Apple has invested a lot of money and research into making everything work together harmoniously so that you have a, a complete branded package of, of, uh, of how, you, how you consume media. So that's what we're talking about. Um, but I don't disagree with you. I, there's some things I love, like I love this book. I, I love this book. Um, I could easily access it digitally, but Oh, that's kind of nice. I like that. So certain things get special placement in my collection. Uh, Humphrey Bear says, I would like a good coffee table art book about comics like Superman, Spider-Man, or Batman, etc. Well, they exist, I guess. There's plenty of them. Because many says, that's because, or rather, EOT says, because that's because you are gangstrous. Word. Uh, let's see. Cam says, the problem is that they displace the books non-SJW prefer because they won't win the competition. I agree, right? So... Anyway, I think that was the point I was making. Uh, thanks for reminding me, because uh, Cam. So while these companies are focusing on, I think, on the wrong customer, the customer that is emerging, the new, the truly emerging customer, is not that customer necessarily. They're not buying stuff because they believe in it. They buy it because they want it and they want it cheaper. So that's and enter in Shonen Jump, and they come in with this product that. This, these kids are just devouring that stuff, devouring it. You go to Barnes Noble today, you can see, you can compare the manga section, the mangaka section to American Western comics. And it's unfortunate too, there's some really good comics in there uh, besides Marvel and DC, but you, they're, they're lost. It's hard to find anything, nothing's in order. You go to the, to the uh, manga section, oh, there's Dragon Ball, one through whatever, and I find everything I want. And if I don't have it there, I can order it, no problem, because I know exactly what I'm looking for. So Cam says, I look at the money I wasted on trash, and it's make, it makes me want to cry. Got to sell a lot of stuff off. Yeah, well, there you go. Um, Daniel Lieber says, Dark Dorn, use Webtoons or tap, Tapastic. Like, I will get Miles the, the way when think of commercial stuff. 
I will get miles that way. I don't know what that means, but I think I never heard of tapastic. I'm gonna write that down. I look that up. Apple apples. Uh, we were okay. Um, Dark Tone says I'm poor. Well, yeah. So am I. Trust me. What weaknesses does this character have? SCS powerlifting. I'm still working on that. I think he does have it. I think it's. Uh, I think it's some sort of chemical or drug, or some sort of. It could be a, a, a an ore from his world, but I don't think it happens here in this world. I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about that. There might be something that happens along the way that impairs him permanently. I'm not sure yet. Okay, so I've got quite a bit in this page. Um, I started drawing some more stuff on this page, but I'm going to draw something else. Let's see here. But good conversation, guys. I appreciate all that stuff. Oh, there's more. What uh, what pen and paper and pens are cheap that are all really you really need? Yeah, that's true. And they go to a you can go to any friend that has a scanner and just scan your stuff. The Japanese beat us again. <laughs> well, they 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 do what they always do. Uh, the Japanese market always has always been really good at taking. Um, the 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 industry has always been good at taking stuff that has invent, been invented and then improving upon it and then building new things from that improvement. So it's because we, you know, Americans have a big thing for tradition, which is nothing, so do the Japanese, by the way. But they're willing to take leaps. Part of their tradition is innovation, you could say, where it's supposed to be our tradition as well, but we have a tendency to want things the old way, you know? That's nothing wrong with that either. I think that's all great. We just gotta find ways to make it work together. Uh, in synchronicity. I get what you're saying, says Cosmetti. I noticed that over the years, the sections I'm interested in are, at shops keep shrinking. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Um, get drawing miles experience. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, Cosmetti says, so now you send the page to me, right? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I like, you know, isn't it cool? Isn't it cool? I like it. I like this drawing a lot. This is my favorite drawing on here. I like this one. This one's dope. Let's see. Uh, have you seen the trailer for *Brightburn*? I'm surprised WB doesn't get doesn't sue Sony over it. Uh, I'll, I I want to address that. Um, so we'll talk about that. Japanese are great at packaging things. Oh yeah, the Japanese are awesome. The, that that their their societal philosophies are very very fascinating to me, and they're very dedicated. They're also workaholics. So I don't know. Kind of you can't again you can't have it both ways. Um, it's very very cool. Well, thank you, Kuzmeti. So here's why they don't get sued. I mean, they could probably try, but it's different. I mean, that's what they try to do when with Captain Marvel. I don't know if you know the story about how Captain Marvel got became part of DC Comics. Um, Shaz, Captain Marvel or Shazam, as people misnamed him at the time, um, believed or he was developed to be a rival to Superman. And in fact, was beating Superman in sales all over the place. And DC tried to sue and they lost. So, because he was different enough, you can't, you know, anybody could wear a cape, anybody can fly, anybody can do things like that. Um, so, and I know that this is a little different because they're using specific like B elements, but we don't know the details. If his name is John and comes from the planet Leroy and uh, he he's strong, but maybe he has other psychic powers. There's other things you can do to make it different. Japanese make everything into an art, even food. Oh, kind of true. Big lawsuit or Captain Marvel over Captain over Captain Marvel, yeah. So anyway, DC, how did the DC uh, overcome this challenge? Well, they bought, they bought Captain Marvel and they put him away. They, they, they didn't, you didn't see Shazam or Captain Marvel for a long, long time. And that they were, they were trying to keep sales building on Superman, which is a, an interesting and smart business move. It was kind of shady though. 
But look how interesting. He comes back, and now there's a movie of Shazam, after all. And people are more interested in that, I think, than they were in Superman. Well, they probably were more interested in Superman, but today... Like, I, I saw an article that popped up in one of my, on my Google search page that said that, uh, that there might be one more appearance of Henry Cavill as Superman. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> you can keep that guy. Um, can't beat them. Can't beat them by them. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it, Daniel. So, yeah, what are you going to do? Make comics, you know? Uh, I really, I've always been more interested in Shazam than I was Superman. Um, mainly because I, when I was a kid, I loved the idea of the kid fantasy becoming, hey, I want to become the hero. And so it was like every kid's fantasy. I, I want to, any, any, every kid that put on a cape was playing as Superman, even though they were kids. And Captain Marvel was the same exact story. It was all of us putting on a towel around our neck, pretending to be Superman. That's what Shazam was. And that's, I think, what the appeal was. Uh, and that's why Superman maybe couldn't compete because, you know, Superman, I was just looking at this Action Comics book. Um, Superman was more about helping guys that had jobs. <laughs> The first thing he does is he he finds he's, he solves the problem of a murder. Like, oh gosh. Oh, I love the Shazam TV show when I was a kid. Fawcett didn't lose, but they didn't have the money to keep fighting for the lawsuits and they weren't bankrupt. There you go, yeah. No, they didn't lose. No, DC lost the lawsuit. They couldn't they couldn't um beat them uh for that thing, but they couldn't keep it going. That's right. That's right. So, so yeah, so they bought, I guess that was, that was the, I guess that was, those were the uh, events that led to the purchase, but that's that they ended up buying Shazam. They put him away into a, into a, into a closet and we didn't see him for a very long time. And then eventually he comes back, I think in the seventies, years and years later, right? Cause it wasn't a, cause I have some of those early books. I've been collecting Shazam uh, for a while. Uh, every once in a while I'll get, you know, usually reading copies. I can't afford. Like that's that's one of those parts of my collection that I'll always keep as a physical thing. Some of my old Marvel. Like I have a a, a good of a good John, a nice copy of John Romita Jr. Daredevil. Um, don't have a lot of good John Romita Jr. Uh, sorry, John Romita Senior Daredevil. I don't have a lot of good copies of his Spider-Man stuff though. But I have little books and stuff that I keep. I also like art books a lot too. I get the art of this, the art of that. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I can't wait to look at the art of Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. I'm super excited about that. So if you guys see it on, out in the wild, let me know. Yeah, I love concept art books, the art of books and for movies and games. I, I go, there's a, a used bookstore here in town that I go to frequently. And uh, I found the, one of the books for Dragon Age, something or other. I don't know anything about that game or book or whatever. Uh, but that art book was astounding. And I bought it for like a song, super cheap. Yeah, okay. I think this guy might be our this guy might be our our, our military officer, Antonio. I'm trying to do a a variation of uh this is my interpretation of a guy like um what was his name? Get your hands off me, you damn dirty ape. Charlton Heston. Cam says, I got a really neat book on the art of Dungeons and Dragons, also with a ton of history of the development of the game throughout the years. I saw that at Barnes and Noble. I'm interested in that. But you know why I'm interested in it? Primarily because of the Dungeons and Dragons cartoon stuff. And it's only like six pages. And I can't, I'm not going to spend that much money for just like six pages of information. I love that cartoon. Oh. Soul Diver is on this, it's still still on the on the drawing board, guys. I'm just retooling it. 
That's a Dungeons and Dragons ride. Whoa. Welcome to the world of Dungeons and Dragons. I'm your guide, Dungeon Master. Elliot, there's a good video on YouTube about the D&D cartoon from the 80s. Oh, yeah? Oh, snap. Oh, snap. Message that to me, man. Put it in the, in the com comments below if you have a link to it. You got the touch. You got the power. Yeah. Okay. How much time have I spent? I'm almost to two hours. All right, guys. I'm going to wrap this up. I do have some work to do. Uh, we'll have a meeting with Andy later today. So I'll be cranking on some other things then. I appreciate you guys. I hope uh, if you guys have not done so, please, if you would, uh, hit the like button. But also... Something I don't always ask for, uh, but I know it's a better ask. If you would please share this on your social media, hit the share button, send it to people on Twitter, send it to people on um, on Facebook, share it wherever you would like. If you think that this is quality, if you think that this conversation was worth your time and might be worth somebody else's time, and it's it's on Facebook, you don't have to pay for it. Um, please, retro blasting. I'll write that down here. Um, please share it. Such a good chat. Thanks, Elliot. Have a fabulous day, everyone. You too, Cosmetic. You too. And uh, um, and don't forget, like I said, hit the like button. That just helps me a little bit here. But what's even better is when you bring people over and you say, hey, man, check out this guy, Elliot, Jerkmonger. You know Jerkmonger? Yeah, he has a really cool Instagram page. You should check him out over here too, man. He's got some cool videos. You should check those out. He talks about crazy stuff. He cries sometimes. He's kind of lame, but, you know, he's an old guy, but he's cool. And uh, And from there... We will all grow together. Again, guys, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. God bless you guys. And from Antonio Bryce and I, we want to wish you a go Atomo. Later, guys.